Your little games don't. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time to my channel, then hi, I'm Amy. This is my channel, make yourself comfortable. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and if you want to see how I created this Taylor Swift inspired zombie, then keep on watching. So unlike most of my videos, I'm starting this one with a completely naked face, so excuse the acne scarring. I'm covering my eyebrows with glue stick to protect them, and now we're ready to get started. So first we're going to use scar wax or facial modelling putty, and we're going to make some little sausage shapes, which we're going to smooth down over the eyebrows to block them out and create a more pronounced brow bone effect. Then we're going to take a smaller sausage shape and make a ridge on the nose, about halfway down the nose, and then we're smoothing that down into the skin as well. You can use your fingers or a blunt spatula tool, whichever you find easiest. then we're going to do the same to the tops of the cheekbones. We want some quite big pointy cheekbones so we're going to be using slightly more wax on the cheeks than on the eyebrows. Don't worry too much about the edges of the wax for now. We're going to be covering that whole area with a layer of tissue and latex in a moment so the edges don't have to be seamless. Just get it nice and stuck down to the skin and then we're going to move on to the tissue and latex layer. I like to use single layers of tissue so I'm going to separate the pieces first of all and then we're going to sponge on some liquid latex all over the area. Follow that quickly with some small ripped up pieces of tissue and then another layer of latex over the top. And we're going to do this all over all of the areas with the modelling wax and then we're going to connect them all together as well so that it's like one big mask piece. Keep the edges of the tissue nice and thin and tapered out. This is what's going to blend that added volume down back into the skin. And then when you've gone all over the entire area, we're going to do one last thin layer of latex and then we're going to allow that to completely dry. Arm flapping is optional. For the body, I'm going to paint on the top of the dress that Taylor was wearing in the video. If you're doing this for a costume party or anything like that, I'd suggest finding an outfit that matches up, but I'm painting mine on just to show you another option.
So I've started with a white base and I'm going to use some grey to add the look of folds in the material and also do some light shading. As you can see I'm using this flat brush on its end to get some nice thin folds into that material effect. Right, now all that latex is nice and dry, we're going to apply a layer of full coverage foundation all over the entire face. This is going to cancel out the colour of the prosthetic pieces that we've made and give us a nice even base to work on top of. As you can see, I'm working that in all over the brows, all over the cheekbones and the nose, making sure that none of that colour underneath is going to show through. Now we're going to take a fluffy brush and we're going to apply a really thin light layer of white face paint mostly to the high points of the face and then blending throughout. If your ears are going to be showing make sure that you paint those as well. I'm also colouring my hair a little bit with the face paints but if you have coloured or bleached hair you probably shouldn't do this in case it stains or reacts to the dye or something. It's better just to get a wig and mess that up instead. Then we're going to take some very light grey to colour the arms and down the body. We don't want anything too dark at this stage, we just want kind of white with a hint of grey in it just to give it a little bit of a difference from the dress. Now we're going to take some black face paint and we're going to add some really simple shading around the straps of the dress, blending the colour down with a little bit of water. Now we're going to take some grey face paint and somewhat contour the chest with it, creating sort of a rib cage design and again we're going to blend that out with a little bit of water. We don't want the effect to be super contrasting so we just want to take a little bit more time to blend the greys out nicely and if you do need to darken any areas you can do so slowly so that you don't go too crazy with the contrast. And then again we're going to use a little bit of diluted black for a bit more shading, this time to the inside of the dress, taking care not to go too dark again. Back up to the face now, we're going to add some grey shading just like we did on the chest blending out using a little bit of water. 
We're focusing this on the nose ridge, the smile lines, underneath the cheeks, the shape of the brow bone and also the hollows of the eyes. And then we're also going to add some wrinkles to make the skin appear looser and again we're going to blend that out with water as necessary. Zombie skin tends to be really uneven and patchy with little dents and pockets and sagging skin all over the place so we're going to be adding small areas of shading to achieve this effect. And if at all possible, we're going to not drop the brush on the floor. That would be foolish. Amy. So, once we're happy with the shading, we're going to add some more texture using a textured sponge and some brown and green face paint. We want this to kind of look like bits of moss and mould growing over the skin so try and make these markings quite random with varying amounts of paint so keep it thicker in some places and more spread out in other places. For the lips we're going to be painting them light grey first of all. This is mainly just to disguise them slightly and we're going to want the lip shape to be nice and thin for this look. It's important to keep going back and checking on your work and if a certain area needs a little something more then you can go back and sort that out as and when you need to. Now we want nice hollow black eye sockets so we're going to paint the eye area completely black and then blend out with a little bit of water. When the lips are nice and dry we're going to go over with a darker grey in an even thinner shape this time and then we're going to shade the inside of the mouth and certain sunken areas of the face with a black or dark grey eyeshadow. I'm also going to set the eyelids with that black eyeshadow to make sure that they don't crease up. not to get black eyeshadow in your eye, it's not pleasant. And while we're there we're going to emphasise some more of those little dents and markings on the skin to give a nice uneven skin appearance.
to blacken the eyes even further, we're going to line the top and bottom water lines with black pencil liner. Now the shading is on, we can reassess the mouldy bits we added earlier and add some more if necessary. We're also going to take that mouldy effect down the neck and onto the body and you can be more heavy handed with it on the body, it adds a nice just crawl from the grave feel to the look. Now as I've been working I've noticed the nose piece is kind of lifting a little bit so I'm just going to take a little bit more liquid latex or you could use lash glue and we're going to stick that back down and allow it to dry. For my hair I'm just lightly messing it up using a sort of back combing motion but just with my fingers to get some messy volume. I actually did this look on a hair washing day so it was already kind of messy which helped me out a bunch actually. <laughs> and then finally I'm adding some more grey and green paint to my hair to complete the dusty graveyard zombie look. So here is the finished look next to the picture I paused in the look what you made me do video and this is my newest zombie look complete. That's it for this entire video guys, thank you so much for watching. What do you think of the new Taylor Swift song? I personally did not want to like it at all but I have to admit it is catchy and I do actually really like it now. I think it was the zombie aspect, it won me over in the end. If you enjoyed watching this video, stick a little thumbs up on it for me before you go and subscribe and I'll leave some links right here on screen to some of my other videos and you can watch those by clicking on the links and I'll catch you in the next video.